G'day beer lovers. This is a bullshit video. He's VB and he lives in Perth. Making super videos for all his work. His channel is great. He's a good mate with Barrel of Feral Southern Hands. G'day beer lovers. It's our old mate again here. VB. Beer lovers. Recently I've been introduced to the Mandela effect. It's a very interesting subject. It's taking over my life. I'm so bloody interested in it. Okay? And up to what, a few months ago, I've never even heard of it. Now I'll explain to you what the Mandela effect is. Now, it gets its name from a phenomenon where there are millions of people in the world that have this memory that in 1991 Nelson Mandela died in prison and they remember the news headlines, they remember the funeral and, and, and people uh, praising him all over the world but, but in reality he actually died in 2013 after he'd got out of prison and became president. So that's the Mandela effect. Now I personally do not relate to that at all. I, I remember him in jail, I remember him coming out, I remember him becoming president and I remember him dying in 2013. So, look, I, I reckon all that is debunked. That is just false. However, other things are now starting to be labelled as Mandela Effect and I relate more to them. Okay, now I'll give you some of these strange things that resonate with me. They may not resonate with you, but they certainly resonate with me. And what the Mandela Effect, what it's getting to, is that somehow the timeline we're on is changing. Yeah, things have happened. Things happened in the past, but it's been rewritten. But the Mandela Effect affects things on a physical level, but it doesn't affect people's memories. It can't change your memories. Okay, so that's the, the underlying concept of the Mandela Effect. This is some of the things which I relate to. Now, first of all, does everyone know that song by Queen, We Are The Champions? What's the last few lines of that song? We are the champions. We are the champions. No time for losers. We are the champions of the world. Now, if you go and watch the official Queen videos and Queen concerts and the original Queen song, that last bit about of the world, you know, we are the champions of the world, that's not even in there. It never existed. However, there are millions of people like me and we all have this belief that the words of the world appeared at the end of the song. But now it's gone. We are the champions. We are the champions. There are other songs which have changed. Barbie Girl by Aqua. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Now it's changed to I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. So it's just one word change, okay? It's gone from the to a. Movies have changed. The most telling one is Forrest Gump. Okay, you know that classic scene where he's sitting on a bench and there's a girl there and he said, My mama always said, Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Now, if you watch that scene now, it's changed. It's only subtly, but it gives a total different meaning to what he said. So this is what how it appears now. Life was like a box of chocolates. You never knew what you were going to get. 
talking in post tense, which gives it a totally different meaning and makes the whole bloody original thing what he said doesn't make sense now. Okay? My mum always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Snow White. Now, do you remember that movie scene? It's a Walt Disney movie, very old movie. Uh, it's an animated movie, and the queen, that evil queen, looks into the mirror, and she says, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Well, that's totally changed. It's no longer mirror, mirror anymore. It is magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? But huh, I remember it as Mirror Mirror. And most people remember it as Mirror Mirror. So that has totally changed. My queen. Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? Uh, other movies. The Matrix. One of my favourite movies of all time. The Matrix. Now, I remember there was a scene where Morpheus says to Neo, and he says to Neo, what if I told you that nothing is real? I think that's the quote. Nothing. What if I told you, Neo, that nothing is real? Well, you search for that in the movie now. It's been taken out. It's not in there anymore. The movie Star Wars. Now, I'm talking about the old Star Wars movies that were made in the 70s, episodes 4, 5 and 6. There's a couple of Mandela effects in those. The first one is, you know that gold robot, C-3PO? It's a gold robot. Does anyone ever remember him having one silver leg? <laughs> this is how, if you watch those movies now, this is how it appears now. Now, I've, I've always been a big Star Wars fan. And if he had one silver leg, like all gold, one silver leg, I would have bloody noticed it. And I think you guys would have noticed it also. So that's that's definitely a Mandela effect. And also, so in, in movie number six, that fight scene between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, there is that scene where Darth Vader says to Luke, Luke, I am your father. Well, that's changed, isn't it? It's not that anymore. It's, he says now, no, I am your father doesn't make sense now, but that's it. No, I am your father. You go, look, if you don't believe me, go off and research it yourself. Okay, that's the only way you're going to be convinced that there's some real weird shit going on. There's a baseball movie called Field of Dreams. Now, there's a scene where this guy is in this cornfield and he has this message in his head. It's like a, it's like a, a spiritual message, right? And it says, well, this is my belief and the belief of everyone else, was that the voice in his head said, build it and they will come. They're referring to a baseball stadium. If you build the stadium, the people will come. But if you watch that scene now, it's been totally changed. It says, build it and he will come. Who's he? Doesn't make sense. But go look at that scene, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you build, you will come. Classic uh, movies from decades ago. Sherlock Holmes. Everyone reckons that Sherlock Holmes said to Dr. Watson, elementary, my dear Watson. Well, apparently that was never said. Star Trek. Okay. Everyone thought that when Kirk was on a planet, he would say to Scotty, beam me up, Scotty. But if you look all that up now, they, they say it was never said. It never appeared in any movie or any TV show. So where the, where the fuck did that come from? Okay. Well, where's it gone to? It's gone. Uh, what else? The Mona Lisa, the most famous painting in the world. Now, when I was a kid, I remember that the Mona Lisa did not smile. Did not smile. She had a bit of a smirk. Have you seen the latest pictures of the Mona Lisa? Man, she's changed. Uh, this is one I've discovered just recently. The statue of Tutankhamun. 
Okay, you know the sarcophagus. Very famous image. I remember Tutankhamun as having the head of a cobra coming out his forehead. But if you look at the Tutankhamun statue now, he's got two creatures coming out of his head. What the fuck? One is a cobra and one is a vulture. Yeah. Uh, another painting, Henry VIII. Now, there is a famous picture where he's standing like this. And it's like he... I remember him having a leg of turkey in one hand. Well, the leg of turkey's gone. Even sporting events have changed. Now, on the 28th of June, 1997, there was that famous fight that is known as the Bite Fight. It's a, it was a fight between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. Now, everyone's memory is that during the fight, Mike Tyson bit off part of Evander Holyfield's ear and he spat it out onto the canvas. Well, if you look at the official video now, all he did was just lacerate his ear. Just bled a bit. There was no bit ripped off and spat onto the canvas. I'll show you. Oh, and some nasty stuff in there. There needs to be a bite almost. Well, feelings are running very, very hot indeed in there. Holyfield was outraged by that. Now, what is the referee going to do about that? Now, I'm not a Bible person, don't know anything about the Bible, but there are a lot of people that have studied the Bible all their life. And they reckon that there are a lot of sections of the Bible that have changed. I'll give you an example. Apparently there's the book called Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 6. And it once read, The lion shall live with the lamb. But it now reads, The wolf shall live with the lamb. Yeah. Spelling has changed also. Now, Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, how do you spell Gandhi? Now, a lot of people had the belief that it was spelt G-H-A-N-D-I. But now, it's spelt G-A-N-D-H-I. The, the H has changed. Um... Monopoly Man. Who played Monopoly when they were a kid? Now, I remember Monopoly Man as having a monocle over his eye. He was an old dude, he had a top hat, had a monocle. Well, if you look at Monopoly Man now, he never had a monocle at all. So where the hell did I get that belief from? I even checked my old board the other day, you know, from my childhood. It's fallen to pieces. It was made in the 1970s. And I've got out all the community chess cards and take a chance cards and yeah there's no monocle now now here's a real weird one <laughs> some people reckon our physical bodies have changed as well okay who remembers that your heart used to be on the left hand side of your body and you when you used to swear a oath of allegiance you put your hand on your heart like that on the left hand side of your body you look at medical books now the heart is right in the center of the chest but where did we get this idea that it was on the left? Some people, I don't relate to this, but some people reckon the skull has changed. Like, if you look at a skeleton, a lot of people reckon that the, the back of the eye socket was just an empty hole. But if you look at a skull now, it's got these weird bones at the back of it. I can't confirm that, but a lot of people reckon that's a Mandela effect as well. So... Why is the timeline changing? There's a lot of theories. Now, one theory is collapsing timelines. Now, in quantum physics, there is this theory called the multiverse theory. And the theory is there is multiple universes out there, multiple dimensions. There's another VB Ed out there doing his own thing, okay? And somehow, the timeline is, is being corrupted with other timelines, okay? There are experiments being done by that organisation called CERN, C-E-R-N. I did a video about them recently, and they're the ones that have created this massive particle accelerator. I think it's on the border of Switzerland and France. It's massive. And what they're doing is they're spinning particles around at nearly the speed of light and crashing 
crashing them into each other and they're creating these new exotic particles. And they do. So one theory is that they're creating little mini micro black holes. Okay, They don't exist very long at all. They collapse upon themselves and they're only really in existence for a fraction of a second. Okay? Now a lot of people think that black holes changes time. That ch time changes when you're near a black hole. So the theory is that CERN is basically fucking everything up with their experiments. Now that famous physicist Stephen Hawking, you know the guy that had that uh, what did he have motor neuron disease? Okay. He once wrote in one of his books, he wrote about the God particle, and he said that when mankind discovers the God particle, it means the end of the universe. Now some other people got some ideas that reality as we know it is really a matrix. It's a computer program. And someone or something is changing the computer program. Now there is a, another idea, I saw a video about this recently, that there is a scientist on the inside that knows what reality is all about. And he's, what he's trying to do is subtly inform humanity and awaken them to the fact that reality is not what it seems to be. But now let's accept that that could be true. What's he saying when he's manipulated that um, statement in the Forrest Gump movie? When, when Forrest Gump says, my mama said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never knew what you were going to get. Now it says, life was like a box of chocolates. So it's almost giving us a message that once upon a time, life was unpredictable and we, we were free to do whatever we wanted and we never knew what was, what was, what was around the corner. Now, because it says life was like a box of chocolates, it's like it's, we've lost control of our life. It's, everything's just controlled by destiny now. We've got no control over our reality at all. That's quite frightening, really. Now, lastly, there is another theory also, and that is that mankind is just basically stupid. And we go through life collecting false memories. Now, if you were to go to YouTube, you discover that there are heaps of videos about the Mandela Effect. And there's heaps and heaps of supposed Mandela Effects out there. Some you might relate to, some you won't relate to. Like, there's one about JFK. How many people were in the car? A lot of people believe that there was only four people in the car. Two in the front, two in the back. But now, if you look at the photos and the footage, it looks like there was six people in the car. But I don't relate to that because I don't have any memory of it myself. But there are heaps of these Mandela, supposed Mandela effects out there. Go out and explore them. It's, it'll do your head in.